Hello everybody, this is Kenneth Wong, a Burmese American writer, blogger and language instructor. What you're listening to is the revival of a pop song from the 80s called Du La La Malala, whether he comes or not. You might know that La is the verb that means to come, but listen to the chorus for a minute here. So why are there so many la's? Is it a mistake? Is she just singing la 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 because she forgot the lyrics? Is she stuttering? Well, not quite. As strange as it might sound to non-Burmese speakers, doubling up a verb, the way she says tu la 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 la, is actually the way to say whether he comes or not. This is a song about a girl who is waiting for her date to appear. In essence, she's saying, People are making fun of me for sitting here alone on the bench. I'm not sure if my boyfriend stood me up, but I don't care whether he comes or not. I'm just going to sit here and wait. Now let me go ahead and explain to you the structure of what she is singing. Also, the title of the song, and that is Tu La La Malala. To simply say he'll come, you'd say Tu La Me. Tu La Me. But if you say Tu La La, by repeating the verb and dropping the sentence and particle, you are now saying whether he comes, whether he shows up. Now let's look at the negative form. To say he won't come, you'll say thumalabu, thumalabu. But just like before, if you repeat the verb la, the negative form of the verb, and drop the negative sentence and particle bu, then you are saying thumalala, thumalala, whether he doesn't come whether he doesn't show up. Remember, whether he comes is tu la la, and whether he doesn't come is tu ma la Now, when you put them together, you get tu la la ma la la, tu la la ma la la. You do not have to repeat the pronoun tu, since in both instances, it's the same miserable, unreliable boyfriend we're talking about. Now, let's go ahead and listen to the chorus again. Strictly speaking, that is, grammatically speaking, the stack up of the verb la is a bit out of order and there are one too many la's in the sequence, but you'll have to forgive her. After all, not only is she getting stood up, but she also needs some extra la's to stay in the song's beat. So if you were to say, not in pop song Burmese, but in proper Burmese, that you're prepared to wait whether your date comes or not, you'll say, tu la la ma la la. Here, ko, the word for body, as in one's own physical body, is also the word that means one's own self. So this is how the girl refers to herself, instead of the usual formal pronoun chama, of a casual pronoun nga. Saunya ma is the verb saun, to wait, followed by the particle ya, must or have to, meaning I'll have to wait. Normally you would say saunya me to end the sentence in the future form, but here the girl sings saunya ma. This is the gerund form, and it's not wrong. Many speakers use this form to finish off a sentence, and perhaps here there is another stronger reason she needs to use this form. Remember that the previous line ends with the verb la, as in tu la la ma la la. So she needs something that rhymes with la, and that means the ma ending is a better choice than the grammatically more accurate and standard me. Now, if you understand that, let's see if you can figure out how to say whether it rains or not. More you are me, it will rain. More you are me. So first you double up the verb and say more you are you are. More you are you are. That is the first part, meaning whether it rains. More you are boo. 
Momiwa bu, negative form of the same expression. So if you repeat the verb and drop the sentence and bu, you get momiwa you are. Momiwa you are. That is the part that represents whether it doesn't rain. Now when you put the two together, you get mo you are you are you are you are. Mo you are you are you are you are. You do not have to repeat. Mo is the same subject. That means whether it rains or not. Then you can go on and say something you might do whether it rains or not. For example, mo you are you are you are you are. Dine chano chang thua ya me. Mo you are you are you are you are. Dine chano chang thua ya me. Whether it rains or not, I'll have to go to school today. Let's take it a step further. Can you figure out how to say whether it's rainy or sunny? You're prepared to do something. It's quite simple, really. Let me show you. First, whether it rains, that is something you have already figured out. You say, mo you are you are. Mo you are you are. Whether it rains. Now, the part for whether it's sunny, let's start by saying it is sunny. And that is, ne pu de. Ne pu de. So you repeat the verb following the same formula and you say, ne pu pu. Ne pu pu. That is to say, whether it's sunny. Now put the two together, you get, mo you are you are ne pu pu. Mo you are you are ne pu pu. That means whether it rains or whether the sun shines. So what might you say about what you will do, whether it is rainy or sunny? Well, I'm thinking about my friends who are marching in protest of the military takeover. So they might say something like, Mo you are you are ne pu pu, ngaru chite yame. Mo you are you are ne pu pu, ngaru chite yame. Rain or shine, we must keep on marching. Now, what if you want to express your two choices in nouns? For example, whether it's coffee or tea, whether it's apple or oranges, whether it's San Francisco or Boston, and so on. Coffee in Burmese is coffee, coffee. Tea in Burmese is la paye, la paye. You cannot double up a noun like you did with the verb phrases before. So you don't want to say coffee fee la paye ye. That would be wrong. To say coffee or tea, you actually need to throw in a verb, and that is the verb to be. That verb is pshie, pshie. That means to be, to occur, or to happen. So, to say whether it's coffee or tea, you'll have to say coffee pipie, la paye pipie. Coffee pipie, la paye pipie. Now go on and say something else about those two choices. For example, coffee pipie. La paye pipie, thou pa own. Coffee pipie, la paye pipie, thou pa own. Please drink something, whether it's coffee or tea. The same approach if you want to set up your choices with San Francisco and Boston. For example, San Francisco pipie, Boston pipie, thua jin de. San Francisco pipie, Boston pipie, thua jin de. I want to go, whether it's San Francisco or Boston. Remember, you cannot repeat a noun to make the structure work. You have to repeat the verb. How about something much more elegant? Let's try to say whether the waves are high or the wind is strong. We'll keep on fighting. Flying jide. Flying jide is how you say the waves are big, massive, and high. Leitande. Le tande is how you say the wind is strong, severe, or harsh. So if you say flying jiji le tandang, flying jiji le tandang, that means whether the waves are high or the wind is severe. To keep on fighting is setayame, setayame. If you want to make it plural, you say setai jayame, setai jayame. The whole phrase now, flying jiji le tanda ngaru setai jayame. Whether the waves are high or the wind is harsh, we must keep on fighting. To all my friends in Burma fighting for freedom and democracy, I'm in solidarity with you. I will begin teaching introductory Burmese again this August. The class is available through UC Berkeley and UC LA. So if you are enrolled there, and if you want to learn Burmese in a classroom setting, I hope to see you in my class. Now, as I say goodbye, I leave you with a song, Thu La La Malala. 
well, just a small chunk so that I don't get into trouble with copyright laws. See you later, now my grandma.